Today on Locked on Rockies, is the opening day roster taking shape? We answer a fan question about a very important Rockies player and, well, another big move in the NL West and the Rockies aren't behind it. You are Locked on Rockies, your daily Colorado Rockies podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Rock on Rockies fans, welcome into the Locked On Rockies podcast for today, the 14th day of March in the year 2024. I'm your host of the Locked On Rockies podcast, Paul Holden, bringing you your daily Colorado Rockies talk right here on the Locked On Podcast Network, where you can find your team every day. If your team is the Colorado Rockies, guess what? You're in the right spot because that's what we do around here each and every day is talk Rockies baseball. You can find us free and streaming on your favorite streaming services. You can also find us on the Locked on Rockies YouTube channel where your subscription, your liking of the video, your hanging out and writing your comments is the best way to help the show grow. Really do appreciate it. Really do appreciate y'all riding with me, too, when we have those uh, couple of weird weird Wednesdays we've had now in the past uh, couple of two weeks. But you know what? We're still rocking. We're still rolling here. Still got lots of rocks to talk about as the regular season is right around the corner. Crazy, right? I mean, it, it really does feel like the season was so far away. Then spring training started, and it's still kind of like, but now. Man, oh man, we got ba Rockies baseball, meaningful Rockies baseball here real, real soon. Uh, we're going to be breaking it down all season long. So like I said, make sure you're subscribing, make sure you're tuned in because, uh, hey, if you want to talk Rockies baseball all season long, that's what we're going to be doing here. I've got a new camera as well, so uh, still figuring that out. So I know the show might look a little different today, but uh, so still going to be troubleshooting the new camera, but it should be looking a little bit better, a little more crisp. Here, I uh, got to get lights and all that jazz, too. But um, anyway, I uh, wanted to dive into a lot of news today, uh, but uh, we're going to first answer a question from the YouTube comments. Uh, I saw that the uh, opening day roster looks to be taking shape, or at least there's some projections from Thomas Harding. So we're going to dive into that. And uh, a big move in the NLS as the Padres make another blockbuster. I mean... You got to be a little jealous of the Padres, right? I know we don't like to admit that, especially for the Padres. But, you know, things might not have panned out as much as they thought it, it would have. And we talked about this with our crossover episode there with Locked On Padres as well. But, man, they make moves. They are aggressive. They have a GM that it, that it, and an ownership relationship that, man, they really trust that their that their GM is going out there and making the right moves and, and and in reality when when you look at a lot of those Padres moves on paper like you, you can't really sit there and, and hate it except you, you, they do give up a lot I mean but uh, we'll dive into that here to close out the show but just to so, um, you know I had to highlight a little bit of uh, of the jealousy there uh, but uh, let's dive into the uh, news let's dive into all sorts of uh, of good stuff. Here on the pod, and I, and I wanted to start things off uh, with a question from Jacob Messer here from the Locked On Rockies YouTube comments. Cubs fan looking for info on Elleris Montero. Dude started spring training on fire, and he's disappeared since being hit by a pitch last week. I'm not sure he's hit a ball since. Any word on what's going on with him? He was going deep into pitch counts, and now he's like lost all that discipline. Well, uh, as being a uh, someone who is not familiar with the work of Montero, this has kind of been the story of him so far in terms of red hot moments cools off strikes out at a, a pretty high rate however when it, your your assumption though of haven't hit a pitch uh, it would be correct uh, according to at least the the rockies game log here on mlb.com he has not recorded a base knock since uh the 4th of march actually but in that time, he does have an RBI. And uh, but the biggest problem with Montero, as he uh, you know, careened the batting average from 333 to 212 
in that stretch here is the fact that he strikes out three strikeouts in the uh, the game against Texas, a strikeout against the, the Angels, a strikeout against the Cubs, two against the White Sox, and one against Kansas City. Uh, this is a moment where we need to see Montero be able to shake that off. We need to see Montero be able to uh, to continue to develop that approach. You're also seeing that pitchers are introducing more pitches into the mix and uh, you know getting closer to what a major league uh, approach is going to be. Montero can hit the ball. Montero is still fighting his way, uh, still having a chance to fight his way into the lineup, but these numbers aren't going to cut it overall for Montero. When we're talking about the step forward that we need to see for Montero, this isn't it. Overall, it isn't it because of this it, it's the strikeout rates the you know what was encouraging before uh this this bad sketch and and, and this is why we can we can we gotta ro- give it a little bit more time here and, and and why the montero process has been frustrating because there's never been enough time for him to navigate fully these these bad stretches yes he's played full months of the season but baseball's weird sometimes you have bad months it, 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 regardless before this bad skid, and uh, after apparently being hit by a pitch, I mean, I, I haven't seen any reports. I haven't seen anything that that mentions that Montero is dealing with any sort of uh, uncomfortable, uh, you know, you know, lingering injury from from that. But leading up to this bad stretch here, uh, where where he has been hitless, Montero has struck out was struck out twice. He struck out twice in, uh, what is this? I'm doing some quick math here. That's uh, five games, six games, and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, in, in almost 10 games, Montero only struck out twice. And for him, that's insane. That's massive. That's in, a great improvement. During that time, he, his batting average was in the 300s. His OBP, you know, it's kind of fluctuating because it was super early in the spring. So it's so kind of hard to get a, a, a read there. So during that time, he was he had five RBI. He had actually it was closer to let's see, eight RBI actually in that time. Uh, so when he's not striking out, when Montero is making contact, when Montero is hitting the ball, he's doing damage. But right now, we're seeing uh, as we've seen often with him, that issue with strikeouts and striking out frequently. Uh, a little bit uh here from Thomas Harding, though. Um uh, and I guess the uh, Roto wires. I thought this said it was uh, Thomas Harding that wrote this, but um, this is from uh, CBSSports.com. Montero is projected to be on the opening day roster, though his fit in the starting lineup is unclear. He'd likely gain at bats at DH, which would in turn push Charlie Blackman to the outfield while endangering Sean Bouchard's playing time. Montero has played a familiar profile this spring as he's posted an impressive 333 ISO. ISO but still striking out a 27% clip. That's really the biggest problem. I mean, again, and, and, and he's not alone in that. This strikeout rate is, is, is a massive problem. But if he, you know, goes through this last week of the of the regular of, of spring training, goes into the regular season and he's able to adjust, he's able to to to, to break that skid, then you're then you feel better. I mean, because because bad bad beats are gonna happen, bad stretches are gonna happen. But unfortunately, what we're seeing is kind of the tail of the tail of the tape for Montero so far. What we're really trying to see is that moment where he breaks these uh, these cycles and he breaks out as that uh, as the uh, the Rockies young slugger, as the Rockies uh, big bat that they're hoping him to be. So we'll see. I mean, but but I think a big reason why you're seeing the change there is as everyone's getting closer and closer to the regular season. Pitchers are going, are throwing harder. They are adding more pitches into the mix. You're seeing more consistent major leaguers uh, at, during these games. So, you know, the tuning time is 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 starting to run down here. I mean, the, the games are going to start mattering here real, real soon. And like we talked about uh, a bunch on this show, the Rockies have no time to to, to start out the gate slow if they anticipate being uh, a relevant baseball team this year in terms of, of, of wins and losses. So, uh, but, uh, you know, good point about being hit by the pitch though. Uh, the, that hit by the pitch did immediately, uh, proceed this, this tough stretch. So we're going to have to keep an eye on that, but, uh, still haven't seen, uh, any news or at least noted here. And I, I don't remember seeing much 
on there. But uh, but good eyes, and thank you so much uh, for 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 tuning in and letting uh, letting us know, Jacob, uh, what 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 you were seeing. Really, really appreciate that. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the roster taking shape. Uh, we're also going to just talk a little bit more about what we think is going to transfer over. Are the Rockies going to be able to make some, uh, you know, you know, are the Rockies still going to be able to stay atop the leaderboard here as they are right now in spring training? I think second place in whatever division thing that they're in cactus league or whatever one of those are. Uh, we'll talk about that and more coming up on today's episode of locked on Rockies. Before we do that, though, got to tell you about some of the folks that help make this show possible, and that includes Amazon Fire TV. Fire TV is your destination for sports, from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs, as well as the Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes, as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball or the college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have Fire TV. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands, all for free. That includes all of us here at Locked On and the most uh, and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels let you dive into all of the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep you up to date with all things in the world of sports. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, cooking videos as well. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. To learn more, visit Amazon.com slash Locked On Fire TV. We're also brought to you by FanDuel. FanDuel's got you covered with all your sportsbook action. And boy, oh boy, do we got sports going on right now. It is prime time basketball betting time. And say goodbye to busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tourney. Whether you're betting on a big up seat or a one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets. Yes, $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. That's 200 bucks to use on point spreads, money lines. You can even pick who's going to win it all. They got the parlay generator. You can do all sorts of cool parlays if you want to have a little fun and, and link things together for a little extra risk, but a little more reward as well. And you're getting bonus bets when your first $5 bet wins. So something to, uh, something to think about there as well. New customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bets, bet wins at FanDuel when you visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. FanDuel.com slash locked on. Don't miss out today. This is the Locked On Rockies podcast for free and streaming on your favorite streaming service, bringing you your daily Colorado Rockies talk right here on the Locked On Podcast Network, where you can find your team every day. If your team is the Colorado Rockies, well, guess what? You're in the right spot because that's what we're doing around here. Hey, uh, we got lots of uh, content coming up for you guys here as the baseball season approaches. As you know, Locked On has launched uh, the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel, Locked On Sports Today. Baseball fans, mark your calendars for March 20th at 7 p.m. Eastern for the best MLB season preview coming exclusively to Locked On Sports Today. On March 20th at 7 p.m. Eastern, be the first to get local insights from the MLB, ex uh, MLB local experts of the Locked On Podcast Network. Find it on March 20th at 7 p.m. Eastern on the Locked On Sports Today 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV app. All right. Yeah, see, lots of going on on the pod. Lots going on. It's baseball right around the corner. Really, really excited. I mean, I, I, I truly, I can, I can safely say I am actively looking forward to the season. Last year, I think I was a little hit and miss. Not going to lie. I don't think there. I was necessarily sitting there being super pumped about uh, about the uh, about the, what was going on. Uh, there, there, you know, there just wasn't a lot there to be overly enthusiastic about when it comes to the uh, that that team last year. This one with the promise, with the question marks, there's just things to follow in the midst of the season as well. When the Rockies were losing and playing bad baseball last year, 
it was really just bad. It wasn't entertaining. There wasn't any sort of kind of value that you were getting for some of this stuff because it was a lot of old veterans playing on just a bad baseball team and and playing poorly. You know, I mean, man, I, I we early in the season uh, when they were out here in Washington and, and when we went and watched them, the first game, it was like a two nothing. It was like a two run game. It was a great game and they, they had lost still, but it was close. It was it was competitive. And then the second game, it, it, it just it's burned into my brain. <laughs> like how bad that game was last year where the Rockies just got hit around. They were throwing the ball all over the place. It was legitimately embarrassing to be wearing a Rockies uniform in that stadium. Whereas this year, I, I just feel like you can, if you, if you're truly bought into the Rockies, if you're truly bought into, to being a Rockies fan and the Rockies fan, you know, and, and, and following the Rockies, there's a lot of stuff to sit there and be like, this team Got, has intrigue this team has some possibilities and uh you know where it, it, that's all going to take shape when the roster takes shape and uh thomas harding has uh, released his ros uh projections for their opening day roster and uh so here's here's where we'll we'll just go through and i honestly don't really disagree with any really anything i mean i think i think this was kind of the obvious uh answer Maybe some of those uh, bullpen arms would be a little bit different, but let's just go through here and, and see what Thomas Harding uh, says. And I'll uh, throw in the ones that if I thought there was going to be any difference. Uh, at catcher, he's got Elias Diaz and Jacob Stalling. First base, Chris Bryant, Brendan Rodgers at second, Ryan McMahon at third base. And the shortstop is going to be Ezekiel Tovar. Here's the outfield. Nolan Jones, Brenton Doyle, Charlie Blackman, Sean Bouchard, and brrr, Sam Hilliard is what uh, uh, Thomas Harding's going with. Adding, though, this is by no means final with Hilliard and Zimmer competing for a spot on the roster. Blackman, whose experience in Coors Field made a difference when he was healthy last year, has shown up well enough in camp that he's being looked at for frequent starts in right field. Bouchard started camp slowly because of an oblique issue. They don't need to have Charlie Blackman play right field. They don't. I mean, it's going to free up some stuff, but I... playing Charlie Blackman in right field at the expense of some of these other guys, when you can have Charlie Blackman, do, you know, th this this is the, the, the big problem there. Because right field should be, and, and you know, frequent, it could be, that, that can mean a whole variety of things. But we really can't be seeing Charlie Blackman as an everyday right fielder. He's not good enough defensively to match up with the rest of this outfield. And he's not, uh, it's, it's, that position can just, so many prospects can play there, even in a rotation way, even in a thing for, to, to get them at bats. And if it's, then that means Montero is playing DH. And that means you're not getting anybody. The Blackman Bryant Montero lineup card means no Tolia, means no Bouchard. I mean, and I just don't think that that's the way to go. Doesn't you know Sam Hilliard can fit into this too as as another? I know that the, him being a bench player is is expected, but it's that reality is going to is going to dawn sooner rather than later, and and that is going to be something that will get frustrating as as we go on. I'm not saying that Charlie Blackman shouldn't be in the game. I'm saying Charlie Blackman should be the DH. I'm saying Charlie Blackman should be someone that is going to, uh, uh, you know, uh, is going to be effective in that role. That's what we thought. But, but to continue to trot him out in right field when you have guys that are can be more effective out there and need time out there, I hesitate. I hesitate. Part of me is like, is it, throw, throw this out there. Just throw it out there. Crazy, crazy thought. Can Charlie Blackman play first base? I mean, they, 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 the Rockies rotate people to first base all the time. If he needs to play in the field, 
put them on first. I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe it's maybe that I don't know if it's it's that easy of a flip. Of course, it's not that easy of a flip to to go play a, a position at the pro level. But it, you know that that is something you're going to have to you, the 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 Charlie Blackman celebration is a good thing. But I just when I hear the word frequent starts in right field, I I cringe a little bit just because there's better ways to field that position while also getting Charlie Blackman in the game, you doing his most effective thing, batting lead off for the Rockies and, and, and being someone that can still steal some bases. I digress. Uh, all right. Designated hitter uh, is going to be Montero. According to Harding. Again, I think that you can still kind of flip, you know, Bryant Montero, that's where it's going to be. Just want to see what uh, what what Harding's got to say about him here. And this was from a couple of days ago, the uh, 12th of March. Montero's improvement against the low and outside slider, an issue his first two years, has elevated him into the project into the projected lineup. He also has played well enough defensively for starts at first base, which means Bryant can play some right field and Blackman can DH. It's going to be really interesting, man. Right field, first base, DH. It's going to be really interesting to see how that pans out. Uh Alan Trejo going to get that utility spot, says uh, Thomas Harding. Did a whole episode on uh, on that if you want to dive into the utility position battle there earlier this week. And here's the rotation. Kyle Freeland, Cal Quantrill, Austin Gomber, Ryan Feltner, and Dakota Hudson. I think that that I, – I think if you followed along enough, if you, if you saw that, that's not that crazy. You knew Freeland, Gomber, and Quantrill are going to be there. Feltner, ha, you know, certainly has 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 started enough and been in interesting uh, spots there. Uh, you know, he'll be Feltner and Dakota Hudson. They will be the, probably on the outside looking in when Herman comes back later in the season. Uh, but uh, yeah, I don't really uh, disagree too much with with that rotation, and that sounds just about like the order it'll go to with, with Kyle being the. Uh, Kyle being the one and Dakota Hudson being the five. Uh, you could probably mix and match in the, in between, but to see Cal Quantrill up into the second spot, interesting little develop, uh, little note there. Uh, it's shown some confidence there in Cal. All right, uh, let's see here. And uh, Thomas doesn't have a lot of surprises uh, making it out. Uh, no, no young flamethrowers. I don't think uh, not a ton, at least here, making it out of uh, the uh, into the bullpen here. Justin Lawrence, Tyler Kinley, Jake Bird, Jalen Beeks, Nick Mears, Ty Block, Peter Lambert, and Anthony Molina is uh, the uh, projected bullpen there from Thomas Harding. Man, I, I would love to see some of these young guys get in there, but uh, I, uh, uh, when Harding explains here, it, it adds some context to that. Block a non-roster invite is listed in the spot where there is the most competition. Veteran non-roster invitees, uh, right-handed pitchers Matt Carasetti, John Curtis, Matt Koch, uh and jeff hartlib and a couple of pitchers who debuted in last season uh evan justice victor bodnick remain in the running so there's still a lot of competition to be had for that bullpen over over the over the rest of the uh spring training there club optioned uh gavin hollowell and riley pint to albuquerque on tuesday but they will be part of the depth picture hey triple a albuquerque there for for riley pint i i'm wondering I'm, I'm i'm hoping he's feeling good too we saw some some decent stuff out of him and uh yeah, I, I I think the bullpen uh, it's looked sharp. There has been some uh, some definitely things to to be impressed by with the bullpen. Like we've talked about uh, before, a little bit of hesitation as well of the Rockies giving up big runs in, later in games. We saw that in yesterday's game as well. So let's see here the projected lineup from Thomas Harding from one through nine including position charlie blackman in right chris bryant at first nolan jones in left brendan rogers at second ryan mcmahon at third leas diaz at catcher montero at dh tovar shortstop doyle at center field still don't like i said i just don't know how much i love charlie blackman in right but that's uh that's that's how you get blackman bryant and uh montero all in the lineup so i like i said i mean as much as i want to disagree with it i i, I think i can i, I think most of it makes sense. Like I said, though, I would probably, you know, put Blackman in there and and and, and into the DH, and you know, you could throw Brian. Like I said, I, I really at that point, I did think that those three guys would be in the starting lineup. I just didn't think I'd be seeing that right field next to Charlie Blackman's name there. 
Uh, and then, yeah, Cal Kyle Freeland, Cal Quantrill, Austin Gomber, Ryan Feltner, Dakota Hudson for the rotation. Yeah, I think, you know, depending on what happens, maybe an Austin Gomber, Cal Quantrill flip, but, uh, you know, probably not going to go back to back lefties there. Throw the right hander in there in between, mix it up a little bit. So there you go. You know, Thomas, he knows his stuff, but uh, who do you think will make the opening day roster? Who do you think's going to surprise? Or do you have someone that you're rooting for to make it out of camp? Let me know in the comments below. We are going to talk about the big news in the NL West coming up here in segment number three. Before we do that, though, got to tell you about prize picks. Football season may be over, but the action on the floor is heating up. Whether it's tournament season or the fight for the playoff home court, there's no shortage of high stakes basketball moments this time of year. Get in on the excitement with prize picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. Want to play alongside some of prize picks favorite players like Meek Mill and Sugar Sean O'Malley? You can now find community plays under the promos tab of the, of the app to view entries from some of the biggest names in the prize pick communities you can check it out you're all you got to do is uh test your skills you pick a group of players you pick a group uh, a section of stats are they going to go over are they going to go under you it's all you got to do it's more or less that's the idea instead of battling thousands of other players including pros and sharks you pick more or less than on two to six player stat projections and you watch the winnings roll in prize picks even offers injury insurance that so that your entries stay in play even if one of your players gets injured for basketball games if you have a player who exit the game in the first half and does not return in the second that player projection won't count against you and the rest of your entry you can go and see all the good stuff on the prize picks app you can download the app today and use code locked on mlb for a first deposit match up to a hundred dollars that's a hundred dollars on your first deposit match there when you download the app and use the promo code locked on mlb you can find it all at price picks pick more pick less it's that easy this is the Locked On Rockies podcast for free and streaming on your favorite streaming services, bringing you your daily Colorado Rockies talk right here on the Locked On Podcast Network, where you can find your team every day. Hey, uh, to wind down the show, the NL West just got better. Dylan Cease is uh, now heading to the Padres, and I kind of said it at the top here. And, and listen, the Padres have had good pitching for a while. They just got better. They are going to be a good team. I think they, that that uh, with our stuff and and, and – Everything that we've learned, this team is still a sneaky good team. The NL West is still loaded with talent, and a lot more talent has been added into it this year. The NL West did get better, and I know the Rockies didn't make any moves, and I know you can sit there and, and, and get disappointed by that. But I still think that this year is another one to just kind of ride with it, see what's going to happen with these young guys, and then you start looking at where you need to invest, where you need to part, where you really need to, 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 to build around. I do think the Rockies are going to learn a lot this year. I think the Rockies are going to get a good understanding of everything, and then they can hopefully position themselves to make a move like this. If their young guys take step forward, if they are getting good, good uh, pitching – from some of these bullpen arms, some of these young guys, there is some intrigue there to build around. On the flip side, though, it's it's another moment where the Rockies are overshadowed. It's another moment where the NL West is willing to go after big names, big players, big game changers, and bring them into their organizations. The Rockies don't usually the Rockies aren't usually able to do that. Don't have a long history of doing that. So it's another moment where the Rockies are uh, – they, they got another step behind the Padres. I think that that's really one way to look at it because the Padres added elite pitching. They lost the Cy Young winner, added an elite picture, a pitcher back. They have a GM that is aggressive. They have a GM that is good at evaluating talent and moving that talent and acquiring talent that's good right here, right now. I don't really I, I can't necessarily say I disagree with the tactics of, you know, they give away a lot of players. They they have they they give up a lot in these trades, but you're also getting basically surefire things back. I mean, you you look at the names that are on the roster for the Padres, and I know it hasn't led to a lot of success, but that's a good team and a good team that's got potential to do damage and fly under the radar this year uh, uh with a, in an NL West 
that that really re reloaded this year. I think the biggest takeaway and, and the biggest thing is the Rockies are going to have to respond to all of these moves in one way or another. If not, if they don't do anything after this season, real trouble, real, real trouble. Because these teams are, are able to convince, and that includes the Diamondbacks, these teams are able to convince the best in the business to play for them. The Rockies need to be able to start doing that as well and getting that good, consistent play. Because, you know, Chris Bryant is supposed to be one of the best in the biz. Folks, that's going to do it for today's episode of Locked on Rockies. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for making us your first listen of the day. Like I said, new camera, new things going on. It's been a little bit of a weird week, but we got another show coming up for you tomorrow. Here, I believe we got the Purple Row guys coming on, and we're going to be talking Rockies baseball and, and more projections. Get their breakdowns from the spring as well. Look for the spring breakout series, too. Until next time, folks, this is Paul Holden saying so long. Go make Locked On MLB your second listen of the day. Locked On Broncos, Locked On Avalanche, Locked On Nuggets, and Locked On Buffs got you covered for your Colorado sports coverage. Until next time, I'm Paul Holden saying so long.